Hi everyone, this is Carrick from Angry Centaur Gaming. I find myself in the perplexing position of positive perturbation where I've become the unlikely suspect in a case I like to call It's Time to Review Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishment. A game that could also be called Abraham Lincoln Private Detective because holy shit, once you throw a top hat on Sherlock, you are a spitting image of that past president I kept expecting to like watch a play at a theater or something. I think it's good to remember that this review is caffeinated, which means delivered at speed, good for your watch but bad for your teeth. You're going to get the data delivered in a dastardly stream of constant content categorized and condensed, so be prepared. Let's begin. The Sherlock Holmes games are actually many, with nine titles prior to this one, with some pleading guilty to being terrible, while others occasionally achieving a fairly good rendition of the hard-to-like, easy-to-trust detective. Here we have Crimes and Punishment, a Sherlock Holmes game with updated graphics, new gameplay systems, and a twist to the typical Sherlock Holmes attitude that's a bit closer to conniving con man with an answer to everything on the tip of his tongue than a mastermind of taste, touch, and sound. So is this the rendition of Sherlock Holmes we've all been hoping for, a Watson-like partner of the TV shows, movies, and other media that have been recently released to such high fanfare? Or does it miss the clues that would have allowed it to attract modern gamers? And is it more like Lestrade sitting back and wondering, what the fuck is everyone else so excited about? Graphics are up first. The step into the Unreal Engine, number three to be precise, leaps the series ahead in terms of graphics fidelity by a large margin. And only now, if you look back on previous titles, do you see the massive gulf between this game and the previous ones and wonder to yourself, how the hell did we play this? It's like when you had Lincoln Logs and trying to get friends excited to come over to your house when they had a Super Nintendo. It was impossible unless your mom was hot. Here we have some slick anti-aliasing, high-resolution textures, facial mapping, better lip-syncing, and it is a virtual list of why your current girlfriend is better than your last one, and there isn't a single thing on the list that would make you go back. Of special mention is the digital wizardry of almost Google-like scale when it comes to the high-definition facial scans of the main character and some of the characters you meet. Sherlock's skin is so detailed you can see individual pores, and even though I'm not a dermatologist, I can say it was fairly interesting up close just to stare at. You could even see the slight blush of activity. It's crazy and and it's used a couple times in the game as clues as well. I did have one issue, which was an odd V-Sync issue where it didn't seem to want to turn on, which is weird since I had the option on and it was on in my control panel on the system. But occasionally V-Sync seemed broken, then fixed, then broken, then fixed, then broken, then fixed, like my marriage. Whatever. For the most part, it works. Characters are given massive polygon budget upgrades. Locations have shafts of light beaming through tree limbs. And the only real downside you notice is that a couple areas are nut crampingly small to the point of claustrophobia. Locations are interesting and varied, but don't see the giant enormous upgrade in detail that the characters see. They just get a fairly large one. There's a sexual joke in there somewhere. Oh yeah, at times, Watson has a tendency to attempt coyotal relations with you in any enclosed space. Overall, however, we're looking at a simply massive graphical upgrade to previous titles, and it may have a problem or two, but it's simply too much good to ignore. Sound, music, and voice. Mr. Holmes, I should like to take the suspects to the yard. You can interrogate them there. Any objections? The sound is excellent and mixed with a good surround spread and moves somewhat easily up and down the sound spectrum, though many environmental effects are repeated over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Sounds are sometimes used as clues as well, and you really can't find fault with the game in this regard, even if you can't count it as being anything more than above average. It does exactly what it's supposed to, and that is add atmosphere to the game, and though used as a clue in a case, I really feel like this is, as always, the odd man out. Music. Well, it's good. It fits the time period and it's mastered well. However, I'm not so sure it's as good as it could be. It seems to be lacking that certain acoustical benchmark you expect. The shows, the movies, they all have a wicked sense of their soundtracks that brings familiarity the very minute or instant a musical track plays. But here we feel a bit like the kid left upstairs alone with the entire family going out on the town, still having fun, jacking off all alone, but knowing you're probably missing something. Regardless, what is there is good. It's just not great. Up next is voice. Excellent. Just great. Everyone's voice with the expected emotions of the situations around them, and if those situations change, shockingly, so do the characters themselves. Remember that first time you got a kiss and you found out there was a tongue in there? Unless it was apparent, this was a true, new, and beautiful thing. In this day and age, when other games can't even keep track of those who are voicing what characters like proper sound management whack-a-mole, their inability to properly direct voice actors so shockingly bad that even blockbuster games find themselves faltering and wondering if the actors spent the money on volume. This game aims 
distance right down the center and nails it. Here Sherlock has played a bit more conniving and ruthless than I remember prior games on other media treating him, and I like it. He has an answer, many times a complete lie, on the top of his tongue at all times, and his condescension can be a bit off-putting if you aren't prepared. I loved it. It feels like a far more modern version than prior titles, and he hits as more of the character portrayed in Elementary than any of the other versions so far. Other characters within the game seem spot on and support the game with well done performances that feel emotionally rooted to whatever location they're in at the time. It makes games like Skyrim and Oblivion laughable with their voices delivered by tree stumps of deadened emotions, while here characters move around the world and act and react differently throughout. Excellent. Gameplay. Well, we know that the developers have made a good deal of strides to bring the game up to date with other titles released in, say, the last half century, as well as the TV show and movies. Let's see how they did. At your side is your ever-present notebook, the equivalent of a modern-day cell phone. Sherlock collects everything from maps to dialogue to documents to pictures of suspects to awards you've collected from the past cases solved. It is a relentless tool for solving crime and more useful than Watson by far. Get stuck? Go here. Want to reread dialogue? Go there. Want to travel? Go here. It's a recorder, cell phone, and tablet in one. Now the conversation system is the main way in which you interact with people in the game. It's rather well done and for most people you can also do a Sherlock vision which slows time down and allows you to pick up things about the person by glancing at different parts of their body. Aside from Sherlock ice screen everyone he meets, the system is impossible to get wrong and I would have loved for some kind of randomness or other mechanic to have been present here to make those situations less of an awkward rendition of Sherlock leering at a dude's god-given hoeing tools and rolling his eyes around to find the hot spot so he can notice a speck of dirt. Another system involved piecing together memories as visual pictures like a 3D hologram. This one was especially fun as the situation wasn't clearly defined and so you're putting together a picture to remind you of a smell that will alert you to a clue about a dude, more importantly, where he's from. It's seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, but Kevin Bacon isn't even the clue itself. It's oddly charming and was a unique aside to the typical investigative systems. Depending on the case, you may travel back to Homestead La Holmes and use various trusty tools he has at his disposal, and many times you can take a smaller temporary copy of that tool with you, like a portable archive of the newspapers you can put at the back of the stagecoach, like some kind of weird mobile dentist waiting room. There's also a disguise desk that's woefully underused, a large number of unique ways to dress that seems to be an afterthought, and an alchemical desk that you use often in some very interesting mini-games to uncover clues about the chemical makeup of evidence. Though these systems are hit and miss in their usefulness, it's that hit and miss that makes the game feel a bit more like a world you're visiting. Perhaps Sherlock doesn't need to disguise himself every single case. Perhaps you don't need to dress like a Japanese fop with a receding hairline to talk to the bailiff. It's the very lack of using things all the time that makes the game feel more like a visit to a real world than a patented presentation, and on this your mileage is going to vary. Watson is useless. That may come as a shock, most likely because there was no lead up to that comment, which is how it's presented in the game. You start out as Watson getting shot by Holmes, who's taking pot shots at the nearby pottery and almost killing you, and about halfway through the game you realize one thing. Holmes was motherfucking trying to off Watson because Watson is useless. If he isn't telling you that he doesn't know what's on your mind or what you're thinking, he He's catching on to fucking geometry like his clothes are made of human hair super glue and those lint rollers cat owners have because they're too stupid not to shave their cats with chainsaws. The dude sticks to everything. Then you end up doing the mambo with him for 14 minutes in a doorway. Step back, then forward, back, forward, back, forward, 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 back. He steps back, so you step forward to leap out the door, but he steps in front of you and says, Sherlock, I never know what's on your mind. I'd like to see how many minutes I can hold your head underwater, Watson. That's what's on my mind useless. I know he's Sherlock's secondary, but he's relegated to being Dom and Airwolf, doing nothing but reminding people he used to be more important and occasionally belting out a one-liner while eating a cracker. Again, useless. They could have used him to go and get evidence, to perhaps talk to others, to occasionally travel back to a spot to find a clue you may have misread or missed, but nope. He's your dancing partner with two random one-liners and that's it. A sad misuse that hits more keenly because, again, the current media has done such a good job in bringing that character into the limelight. Now, when it comes to the cases themselves, there's a good deal of them to be solved, and it's enjoyable to hear Lestrade try to pawn off his shit cases to Sherlock from time to time, and to hear Sherlock squirrel his way out of the boring ones to take on the meaty ones, or at least the very ones that wouldn't be solved by him simply pointing at the person in the jail cell and saying, yep, that's him. From time to time, you and Watson will need to experiment like gentlemen Mythbusters and stab a bitch. Oh wait, a pig. Or shoot some dynamite. Or what have you. To prove something that Sherlock is thinking. These are fun but rare asides to a mostly cerebral game that certainly has more in common with the BBC TV show and the books rather than Robert Downey Jr.'s rendition of Sherlock Holmes as the fucking fall guy with Lee Majors. 
Most of the tried and true gameplay is here, but it's augmented a bit with some gameplay systems that help the game keep a smooth transition from investigation to interrogation to interpretation of what went down. You see, that's a thing here. Cases aren't 100% solved. No, here there's always some question as to if you guessed correctly and if you found all the clues and if you put them together right and if you made the connections that back up your idea of what's gone down. The game does such a good job with the ambiguity, never making you feel dumb, but instead making you feel like you really need to pay attention. As you come across clues, you can tie them together in the Sherlock Brainatron, a strange strange rendition of the synapse in Sherlock's mind. As he connects clues, and just because you have a clue doesn't mean it can't mean two different things, like when a chick yells I'm pregnant. Here the same thing happens with clues many times having two different meanings, and choosing one meaning may have your entire case and idea of what happened come crashing down around you, as what made sense suddenly doesn't. So what makes this Sherlock Holmes the true Sherlock Holmes? It's a massive graphics update with improvements in all fields. Its gameplay system additions feel far more modern than past titles. The cases are, for the most part, very interesting, with one rather drab affair I like to call the case of how the fuck did this boring ass case get into the game case. That's one too many cases, but I don't give a shit. What makes Sherlock Holmes a bit Lestrade? Occasional bugs with V-Sync and Watson attempting to see if souls exist by walking directly into Sherlock's rectum and asking if anyone is in there. The locations for the most part are rather confined and though that's due to the investigative nature of the game, it's still cumbersome at times. Not near enough interactivity on the side for Sherlock Holmes games. This dude should be guessing chicks' weight, identifying lip marks on trousers, and pointing out thieves in the world left and right. Instead, for the most part, Sherlock is razor-focused on nothing but a select few individuals involved in each case. So I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or disappear the game without a clue rating scale. This is a buy. The cases are almost all interesting. The game has a good deal of replayability if you want to try to put together the clues in different ways. The voice acting spot on. The overall playability of the game is very high. And while playing it, it's impossible at times to not feel a little heady when you spot a clue or figure something out before the game tells you about it. It's fun to guess what happened and see if your ideas pan out or if they subtly infect the clues you've gathered and how you've lined them up to either crucify or absolve the guilty party. This is the game that Murdered Soul Suspect wished it was. Hell, this is the game that past Sherlock Holmes games wish they were. So that's it. The review's over, and I'm awash with the glow of another case solved, another game reviewed, another section of my life cut off and spent playing digital goodness. There's nothing better in life. If you liked the video, hit like. If you disliked it, hit dislike. And always remember that you need to look out Sherlock's telescope in the game when you play it. Trust me, it's fucking nightmare fuel. Peace out.